Okay, so firstly, Mr. Sands, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for everything you're doing. It's very good to be part of this uh, project. Fantastic. So, um, Professor Sands, could you tell us about yourself and your involvement with international criminal law? Well, I teach international law. I'm professor at University College London. Uh, I'm a barrister and I've done quite a few cases about uh, international criminal law, genocide, war crimes, crimes against humanity, the crime of aggression. Uh, and um, I became first actively involved in this area in my working uh, way uh, in the 1990s when I became involved in the negotiations to create the statute of the International Criminal Court. So today marks 25 years since the signing of the Rome Statute, which, as you know, led to the creation of the International Criminal Court. What does this mean to you? Well, I was in Rome in 1998 in the summer for the negotiations, uh, something I've written about in a number of my books, East West Street and uh, Lawless World. Um, and it was a very significant moment because it was the uh, moment 50 years after the end of the famous Nuremberg trial that finally the desire of the international community, such as it was, to create a permanent standing international criminal court uh, came to fruition. So that was a big moment. And of course, with the passage of 25 years, um, we look back on the hopes, the aspirations, the anxieties uh, of that period. Um, things have, of course, not panned out, I think, quite as everyone would have hoped. Um, and there are many questions, uh, even whether or not the creation of the International Criminal Court um, was premature. Uh, I, I'm not of that view, um, but it's plain that over the last 25 years and at this moment, we need to reflect on what's worked, what hasn't worked, and where we go from here. Thank you, Mr. Sands. So two years ago, you co-chaired an independent expert panel tasked with defining ecocide as an international crime. What is the importance of legally recognising ecocide in this way? But one of the interesting things right now in modern international criminal law is that the focus is, and for very understandable, on the protection of the human. Genocide, crimes against humanity, war crimes, the crime of aggression are all concerned with the well-being of individuals and of groups. These are the very same crimes that existed in 1945. But in one sense, the world has moved on uh, since then, and in particular, the protection of the environment has come to the fore, has become increasingly important. And the idea of the crime of ecocide is to recognize that and to inscribe into the statute of the International Criminal Court a fifth crime, the criminalization of actions that cause massive, systematic, widespread harm to the environment. And the project that I was involved in and continue to be involved in is intended if you like, to give an ecocentric focus to the work on international criminal law so that it's not all just about the human. Absolutely fascinating and so inspiring. Incredible work, uh, Mr. Sands. Could you give us an example of justice and the rule of law having a profound and inspirational impact in relation to humanity's survival? Well, these are difficult moments. Um, the world or Europe is at war again. Uh, there are crimes being committed and crimes have continued to be committed despite our best hopes after 1945 and 1998. But every so often there are developments which occur, which are, I think, extremely significant. Uh, one that I'm thinking about, and which is in fact the subject of my next book, is on the circumstances in the period after the adoption of the statute of Rome that created the International Criminal Court, a few weeks later, of the arrest in London of General Augusto Pinochet, the former head of state of Chile. One thing led to another, but the crucial thing in that case was the ruling by the House of Lords, the highest court in the United Kingdom, 
that if you're charged with international crimes, genocide, crimes against humanity, torture, you cannot anymore count on being able to rely, even as a former head of state, with an immunity from prosecution, investigation, or extradition. That, I think, is extremely significant. And I'm quite sure that that decision in uh, November 1998, followed up by another judgment in March 1999, was in many ways um, a reflection of the values first of Nuremberg in 1945, and then of the creation of the Statute of the International Criminal Court in 1998. So, you know, it's a slow and long game, international criminal justice. Uh, you have to remember that the 1945 moment was absolutely revolutionary. Uh, the idea that the sovereign, the state, was no longer absolutely powerful. Uh, it was subject to constraints and limitations. And that's essentially the project which I'm involved in and which so many people are involved in. Wow, fascinating. Can't wait to read that book. So given the state of the world, do you have hope that humanity actually can survive? I mean, and what part, if we do survive, might ecocide law play in that? Well, that's a very big question. Um, and I'm generally, as my friends and family and students and colleagues know, a pretty optimistic person. But I have to say, right now, I'm feeling pretty glum about things. I think we face an almost existential threat, and that is climate change which will transform, I think, the way that we live. We've experienced in the last few days the hottest recorded day in human history, uh, and that's going to have very profound consequences. A few weeks ago, I took a trip to the United States and I visited uh, Utah and Arizona, and I found myself at a particular moment sitting at an extraordinary spot, looking down uh, on a river called Gooseneck, uh, and looking down a thousand meters, a kilometer, into an extraordinary site, a river that had been carved into the rock over millions and millions of years. And I have to say, sitting there looking at that site, I realized that uh, the challenge is not the future of the planet. It's going to survive whatever we do to it. There's no question. How it survives, of course, is unknown, but it will. The real issue is humanity. And I've come to understand in this curious way that ecocide is not just about the protection of the planet and our environment, but also about our own very survival as a species. And I think right now it's not looking very good because we simply don't have the political will to do what is necessary to protect us from ourselves. The criminal law has a role to play in all of that. It shifts and changes consciousness. But at the end of the day, um, the criminal law is not going to protect us and not save us from ourselves. It's about political will. The law plays a role in forming that. And so in that way, it has an important role to play. I happen to agree with you. I've, I've, never, I've never felt so concerned and frightened and sad. Oh, I think it's pretty serious. Yeah, it, 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 gen it, it genuinely is. Well, but you and I and others uh, are getting up every single day, yep. doing everything that we can with uh, every breath that we have on this beautiful planet. So and on that note, that leads us nicely to saying, so how can people support the legal recognition of ecocide? And what advice might you give to young people? Well, uh, as I said earlier, I'm an optimistic person. I have students, I have children, uh, all people in their 20s or younger. And I think one's got to keep up with the challenges and one's got to imagine that we can do something in the face of these issues. What I would say is this. In 1945, there was an incredibly important moment. For the first time, governments around the world decided that the power of the state is not unlimited. There are limits on what the state can do. The state cannot kill and maim and torture and disappear people and do other such terrible things. That was the United Nations Charter. That was Nuremberg. And everything that has followed has sought to, if you like, develop and protect that particular moment. The 1945 moment is under threat right now. It's under threat because of the rise of nationalism and xenophobia and racism and discrimination 
and war and lots of other horrors. And I think the first thing to do is learn about what happened in 1945 and act to protect that moment, that acquis of 1945, and then build on it, develop it. The protection of individuals, the protection of groups, and I think most significantly of all in our times, the protection of the environment. And for that reason, I think ecocide plays an absolutely central role. The next steps will be to integrate the concept of ecocide into international law, into domestic law, and into the statute of the International Criminal Court. I have no doubt that is going to happen. Countries are beginning to move in that direction, but it needs to happen fast. And for younger generations, I would say, get engaged, support the role of the law, join organizations like Stop Ecocide, and don't give up hope. There is everything still to play for.